Well, there certainly was a, a lot of serendipity involved in the beginning of the Eagles, and uh, you know, it was very, it was interesting that the night that I got hired to join Linda's band, San, I was sitting here at the bar at the Troubadour. John Boylan was there, and walking up over on the other side came Don Henley to introduce himself, to say hi to John, and say that he had sent a, a song to right. You'd sent you'd yeah. sent a song to John for Linda, so. That's just that just happened one night at the Troubadour Bar, and then you know the fact that Don and I got to play in her band and we were roommates together, you know that just sort of start you know we started talking about our dreams and what we wanted to do and and you know so you know we were very lucky and then of course as, as I said when we told Linda <coughs> that you know we really wanted to have our own band, then she helped us get the guys. She's the one that said you should get Bernie Ludden. So we brought him out to Disneyland for some shows we were doing on graduation nights. And Bernie sat in with us, and we got to meet him over the course of a week or so and talk with him. A couple weeks later, we replaced the bass player for a weekend up in uh, Los Altos with Randy Meisner so that he'd come up and play with Linda and we could talk with him as well. So, you know, it was, uh, it was really important. Now, we, Linda didn't want to be filmed and interviewed for, for the DVD. And, but we were lucky that we were able to find these interviews with her. And then, of course, then they found footage of Don and I playing with her at the Troubadour, and then, you know, this other footage of us, all the Eagles playing with her at Don Kirshner. So, you know, she was a pivotal, you know, person in our lives. And, and As was John Boylan, her manager. Yeah. And they were both very generous with us. They, they helped us form this group. And uh, nothing but good things to say about her. She's retired now, basically. She's, she's writing a book. She has written the book. Yeah. yeah. And did she talk to any of you for it? Mm, not me. And the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? You know, until you mentioned it, I had forgotten that she, she's not in, right? Which, she's not in. Which is another travesty. Uh, it's, yeah. That's why I called it a peculiar, perplexing organization the other night. When it I certainly did. did. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, and it is. Um, you know, because of some sanctimonious, calcified opinions about what is rock and roll and what is not rock and roll. As I said in the speech the other night, the, the, the legendary drummer Buddy Rich said there are only two kinds of music, good and bad. And, um, and I think he was right. But she ought to be in there. If, if anybody's in there, she should be in there. But it's very political, you know, that organization. It's, it's not necessarily about merit. They have a television show to promote every year, too. In the beginning, in the first 20 years of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, there were just dinners in New York that no one attended, that had legendary jam sessions and great commingling and table hopping and uh, you know the meeting of everybody and stuff. And none of that's kind of going on right now. But Linda should certainly be in just about every Hall of Fame that there could possibly be mm -hmm. for someone of her uh, talent. 